folks, welcome back. Listening to a little more than me. Guys are here now uh, talking about their time over in England. They got a couple great stories. So tell me about the backstage stuff. Well, the, the backstage <laughs> area was three days of Departure. all you can drink, all you can yes. drink. Uh, when we, we arrived Wednesday, we just kind of relaxed and, um, you know, went and did the pub thing, went and did Abbey Road. Um, Friday, we got there early in the VIP area to just see what was going on, meet everybody, and we definitely went crazy Friday night. Yeah. And we actually coincidentally ran into the um, the folks from Rich Products. The whole family was there. Well, you were just telling me that a, a lot, they have an association with the Hard Rock. Yep. Uh, so a lot of the VIP food was, it was some of it, a portion of it was... Rich products food, so yeah, more than likely, make you feel good. from Buffalo, yeah. Oh yeah, and, yeah. and they they accepted us with open arms and made sure that we were taken care of and introduced us. So everyone introduced us to everyone they knew, and you know, long story short, we were definitely on the uh, on top of the tables, you know, doing shots of Crown and chanting seven one six that first night we were there. <laughs> so while, some <laughs> while Pearl Jam is playing, there's actually a a bigger deal going on backstage with all the Buffalo people screaming and. And drinking shots. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. So you you, you guys in, in, invaded England and, and took it over Buffalo style. We we did we did. It was and a, you said the Rich Products guys had seven one six shirts made day, up. They were in front row when you played. The day we played, they had custom shirts. I think it was done by uh, a Buffalo company. Uh, they had these blue and yellow shirts, uh, Sabres colors actually, and it just said seven one six, and that was our battle cry. Anytime somebody from Rich Products saw a member of more than me or vice versa, you just fist pump and you'd yell 716 and all of a sudden there'd be five or six 716 from all over the VIP <laughs> tent. It was it was like our it was like our rally cry. It was like our smoke signal. And Bob Rich Jr. was there? Yep. He's a bass player, is he not? He's a yep. musician. Yep. That's what I thought. Big music fan. You know, we need to get with him because one of the things I wanted to cover on this show today, but we didn't have time, is I think all shows should be at Coca-Cola Field from here on. I, you I, I hate Darian Lake. I want to boycott it. I really don't like yeah, I can't stand the sound there. I've seen the a lot of there. shows at minor league ballparks, and it always ends up being really cool. Cause it'd be great. It'd be great for the city, too, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, sure. It'd be fantastic to have, you know, if you took Absolutely. the 20 shows that happened at Darien Lake and moved them all to Coca-Cola Field, it would be great. Yeah, I've seen so many shows at ballparks and minor league ballparks, too, and they all end up being really, really cool. I think the sound is better, too. It is. Or at the very least, you know... I used to play baseball when I was younger, and I used to go to Bison's games, and it, it, it would kind of be a bit of a, a Buffalo milestone for me to be able to be like, hey, I'm playing where the Bison's play. Like, I used to go here and watch baseball when I was a little kid, yeah. being a baseball fan. Now, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sharing the field and sharing the stage. I mean, being a Beatles fan, it's kind of like me doing Shea's, yeah. Shea's stadium, <laughs> right? Well, and, and they're always trying to come up with these cockamamie ideas to revitalize Buffalo, mm -hmm. you know, or they want to pay $53 million to have uh, a retail store selling fishing products <laughs> down there, which makes no sense. This would bring people. You'd bring, you know, bring a half a million people I down the city. I say we do what heard it on the X show. We'll sponsor it, and we'll get a bunch of bands, and we're just going to take over Coca-Cola. It sounds like to me that the rich products folks like to drink like I do, so maybe we could find if, a common if you ground. you cook it, they will come. <laughs> if you cook it, they will come. <laughs> That's right. So, we're talking about partying backstage. We, and I have, I have to say this, because Justin filled in, filled in on this earlier. Um, part of the reason why he didn't throw up on Paul McCartney, which we're so glad he didn't, because it really would have scarred Buffalo probably. Yeah. But uh, is that you didn't, you weren't, had have enough time to eat a lot, but you seemed to find enough time to get to the bar to double fist it. <laughs> right? Is this? Is it, it certainly wouldn't be as rock and roll for me to say I was double fisting hamburgers or something. Exactly. It's, it's much more rock and roll to say I was, I was partaking in the, uh, in the, in the pints that were, that were flowing backstage, which I was. Um, and I know it's backwards. Because I was drunk, I didn't throw up on Paul, but it was because my senses were so You're probably relaxed. You were just you're like, like oh, that's I was very zen-like yeah. uh, till I then realized it was Paul McCartney. Then I, then I started screaming like a little girl. But, uh, but yeah, we, we, we had a ball meeting, all, all the legends. And uh, <laughs> like I said, I was, I was geeking out, telling the guys from Crosby, Stills, and Nash that my, that my parents raised me on the Deja Vu album and... The fact that I was like seeing three of, of Graham Nash at the time, <laughs> he, he, he got a kick out of it too because, you know, I, I would shake his hand, but I was reaching for three different hands, but it, it helped. Who was the best performance there? I mean, obviously, besides you guys, who was the best performance that you guys took in? Was there a performance that blew you away? Who? Yeah, it's so tough. I mean, Pearl Jam was unbelievable. Were they? they are the essential, you know, rock outfit. 
hands down. And Stevie Wonder was literally on the ground like Angus Young playing his guitar. Oh, really? The se first song, I think? Yeah, he just comes out by himself <laughs> and just, I mean, almost as good as any lead guitar player in any of the bands. Yeah. He just goes out there and just melts faces with this guitar and actually just, yeah, drops on the ground. Starts, what Angus Young style. Yeah, almost starts duck Angus walking Wonder. on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you... I know you were backstage a lot, obviously drunk with the Rich Products people. But did you get to see like all three days? Did you get to see a lot of a lot of the performances? Yes. We were we were in and out all all three days. You know, if there was a good band on, we went outside and out in the field and checked everything out. And um, you know, if it was someone that we just didn't want to see or we just want to have more drinks backstage, yeah. then we hang out backstage. We actually probably one of the coolest memories of being in the VIP area was the second day we were there, we, we found out through the grapevine that there was going to be a surprise performance inside the VIP tent um, at the like the little mini stage they had set up there. Um, turns out it was Melissa Etheridge. Oh, really? So cool. Melissa Etheridge shows up out of nowhere Saturday, just there's maybe like 40, 50 people in this little VIP room and just rocks out three songs like you wouldn't believe. And it was just her and one acoustic guitar and it, it she sounded unbelievable and was so enthusiastic and soulful. It was it was really memorable. Yeah. So and she just played solo. Just mm -hmm. solo. Yeah, she's incredible solo. Unreal. She actually played later that day on the B stage. So we were cracking jokes that, that as much as we wanted to meet her, we weren't sure if she would take kindly to us because we, we weren't sure if we kicked her off the A stage and she was going to beat us up because she could. Oh yeah. yeah. Now, she could. I'm but sure she wouldn't care. She seems you know. She seems like a. a she was great. Yeah. She was great. We did get to meet her, and she was awesome. And I saw on your Facebook that you guys actually did an um, impromptu performance in the VIP tent. Was it? How did that? Yeah, come exactly. Right after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did that come about? Uh, they, uh, they. It was actually the dudes, and it, it was some of the rich guys. They, they, um, <laughs> they wanted to hook us up, and they're like, "You guys should jam a song right after Melissa." We're like, "Really?" He's like, "Yeah, absolutely." Went and talked to a couple of his his friends at the Hard Rock. Five minutes after Melissa stepped off stage, more than me was on stage. However, the funny part about it was we literally had no instruments. So they're, they're like, oh, pick a guitar off the stage. I pick up this acoustic that's autographed by all the guys in Oasis, and it <laughs> just plays like crap. And, you know, of course, Oasis is going to donate the worst guitar to the <laughs> right, hard rock that doesn't play. So then I'm like, oh, man, I can't play. It was literally unplayable. Right. And these guys didn't have any hand drums, no percussion, nothing. So literally one of the... Um, ladies at the hard rock pulled out like a brand new charity guitar right out of the it was like some epiphone you know 150 dollars hard rock guitar so i'm sitting there tuning it up and i'm like okay this will do the job these guys are you know brainstorming what to do with um you know the percussion uh riz do you want to tell your percussion story <laughs> yes uh, uh todd and i decided um because ryan was just gonna sing and joey had his guitar so i told todd i said all right go get uh go get a shaker from the bar and a glass <laughs> fill it with ice so that you have like a shaker he does one better. He goes, they had a coffee stand, and he actually convinced the guys at the coffee stand to give him beans. So he fills this uh, <laughs> glass and the shaker with beans, and he literally, he's got like a giant egg shaker. Oh, that's great. I and saw I said, that. Yeah, and I said, okay, I'll be right back. I went to one of the, uh, the uh, Bacardi tents, and I asked him if I could borrow one of their ice buckets. And so I did. So I had a bucket, and I'm playing it basically as a bass drum, and Todd's shaking his thing and we basically between the two of us had a almost a drum set and the song we decided to play our, our kind of our single mama said um, really is tailored to very to just be very percussive and, and very sparse with the music so it it's vocally driven so as long as Joey was feeding us the rhythm we pulled it off very well and immediately after the performance uh, everybody thought got a big kick out of it because uh, we literally were playing stomp style we were building instruments as we were going and they immediately after that, all the all the big wigs, a lot of the representatives from Hard Rocks all over the country wanted to meet us. Yeah, that was our introduction to the Hard Rock. Well, that was first. great, though. Was I mean, cool. and you overcame like Marines. They're like used to <laughs> Marines. <laughs> we 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 get the party started. Yeah, you're we're like whatever we can. We're, we're like, more than your guy. Musical MacGyver. I was gonna <laughs> say. Great. Great. But because of that, but because of that, I one thing that we always forget to mention too is. Around that time, they all the people from Hard Rock were going to all the celebrities, videotaping them wishing Ringo Starr a happy birthday because, like that week, it was his 70th birthday, and they were hoping that Paul would do something special on stage, which a week later they wound up being on stage together at Madison Square Garden or something. But all these celebrities are being taped 
saying happy birthday, Ringo Starr, and they asked us. So it's all these celebrities. It's 